Państwa przed nami nagrane wystąpienie doktora Patryka Dinyna, wykładowca politologii na Uniwersytecie Notre Dame. Dr. Patrick Dinen, bardzo proszę. Hello, my name is Patrick Dinen and I am a professor of political science at the University of Notre Dame. I'm very sorry that I'm unable to be with you uh, at this week's meeting in Warsaw. I was originally scheduled uh, to join you, uh, but due to challenges with travel and um, the impending graduation of my daughter from high school on this coming weekend, uh, I really thought it was prudent uh, to remain in the States uh, and not to miss that signal event uh, for my daughter. Uh, but I would otherwise have been very glad to have been with you in person. Uh, I was invited uh, in order to be able to speak about the latest, um, sorry, this is in reverse, but the latest edition of my 2018 book, Why Liberalism Failed, uh, which is this uh, newly released Polish translation of the book, uh, which I won't attempt uh, to read out loud, uh, but I'm delighted uh, that the Polish edition has just been released. Uh, I look forward to future occasions when I might be able to, to uh, join you uh, in Poland to speak about the book, uh, where I hope and I think it will um, generate uh, a good deal of conversation and uh, discussion. Uh, just in very brief sum, I wanted to talk, uh, I was invited to talk just a little bit about uh, some of the main arguments of the book. And in the book, uh, I argue uh, that one way in which we can understand the phenomenon uh, or the ideology of liberalism is that uh, while it is in many ways it uh, has a self-understanding or self-presentation as an argument for limited government, uh, and in particular, limited government that's based upon the consent of the people, uh, that it's narrowly political in its form, uh, that it seeks uh, only to create a kind of neutral sphere for people to pursue their own ways of life, that in fact, it's deeper internal logic leads to a much more profound transformation, uh, not just of the political order, but the entire social cultural order, uh, obviously including things like economics um, and uh, education and technology. Uh, and all of these aspects of liberalism based upon this original key concept of consent uh, that no choice can be seen as legitimate unless it arises from the free consent of an unencumbered individual. That this kind of core aspect of liberalism results not just in a transformation of all aspects of human society, but becomes itself a kind of source uh, and force of authority and even authoritarianism uh, that I think we see unfolding in the modern liberal order. Uh, we can think about this kind of deep underlying logic of liberalism in a couple of ways. Uh, obviously, the first of them is that narrowly political understanding that no political order is understood to be legitimate unless it arises from the consent of the governed. This is a core principle that's articulated in the American Declaration of Independence uh, that uh, one can't or ought not to be ruled by rulers uh, who have not been uh, freely chosen uh, and consented to uh, by, the, uh, by the people, that the political order itself must be a reflection of their consent, and thus that uh, this prevents and precludes arbitrary political uh, forms and arbitrary political leaders. Yet this idea and ideal of free choice and the consent of the governed itself lies on a deeper understanding of the kind of human who can give consent. One can't, uh, in, one can't assume that consent is freely given unless that person giving consent is in a condition of complete freedom, a complete unencumbered, uh, unlimited, um, and uh, unrestrained ability to make free choices that reflect the deepest preferences of that individual. In other words, in a political order or in a social order or in a cultural order where our beliefs, our basic presuppositions have been deeply shaped by the nature of that order, the assumption in the, in the liberal worldview is that that choice can't be seen as freely given 
because it comes from, from a place of a set of deep-seated beliefs, which themselves have not necessarily been the consequence of free choice. So we can think of someone who is uh, raised in a, in a household, in a home uh, with a certain religious tradition, with a certain cultural uh, tradition, certain kinds of uh, traditional forms and ways of life, that while they could freely consent to remain in that order, think for example of the Amish uh, in here in the United States or a member of the Catholic Church who uh, retains belief in the Catholic Church as they reach adulthood, that by the liberal understanding that person hasn't given true free consent because that person has never been in a condition of unencumbered freedom uh, that makes their choice in some ways um, free from any undue influence that hasn't itself uh, been freely chosen. So at the deepest level, we could say that this ideal of political sen consent ultimately has to shape and transform not just the political order, uh, but the entire worldview uh, and in the entire uh, world in a sense of the liberal order. We can think of this in very mundane ways. For example, no one in a liberal order is understood to be in some ways defined by where they come from. In the same way that, for example, Alexis de Tocqueville or Thomas of Aquinas uh, would once have, you know, we, we, we understand their names in some ways because of where they come from, who they are is deeply shaped by where they come from, reflected in the very name that they, that they, uh, uh, that, that, that they carry with them through the course of their lives. Or in a similar way, uh, how many names reflect the people that we're from. Uh, the Scandinavian uh, tradition of being named for your father, uh, Anderson or Johansson, or for your mother, uh, Lavran's daughter. Uh, or as far as I understand, uh, the Polish, uh, typical Polish last name of Ski, uh, Lewinsky, uh, is uh, also a reflection of um, often one's parentage. Uh, I, my tradition, the Irish tradition, uh, one is named O'Regan or O'Malley, again, to reflect the people you are of. Uh, we can say that one of the core aspects of the liberal tradition is to make any of those defining characteristics fundamentally, fundamentally arbitrary, and that we should view them as arbitrary, that where we're born in or to, the places we're born in, the people we're born to, the traditions we're born into, must be seen as arbitrary and merely a kind of um, accidental feature of oneself that can be easily and indeed should be easily shucked off uh, um, like, a, like a carapace of a, uh, of, of a cicada, the, the, the insects that are now emerging here in the, in the United States uh, for their uh, uh, every uh, 17 years um, in the same way that, the, that they shuck their carapace in the same way in a liberal order a liberal people should be able to shuck their um, uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 definition of who they are. Thus, a society, a liberal society, is one of hypermobility, uh, in which the ability to leave or exit or escape or move on uh, to redefine oneself becomes the default. Uh, and in a similar way, uh, the kind of cultural inheritance, the religious inheritance, uh, heritage that we. Uh, that we might have inherited is seen as just another kind of a market choice. Uh, this is true, of course, it, uh, we could say in a second, maybe a more pertinent example today, this becomes uh, a defining feature of liberalism in the sort of the deepest aspects of who we are. We can think of our religious faith uh, once, once would have been understood as the core defining feature of a human being as simply a kind of accident of birth uh, and something that should be chosen or shucked off as a kind of market choice. The, 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 um, uh, the likelihood of becoming a, a father or a mother, a parent, uh, a wife or a husband becomes now increasingly seen as a kind of limitation and burden on our individual liberty, the ability to constantly redefine who we are. So in the first instance, to be a wife or to be a husband is understood increasingly as a choice that can be revised, it can be rejected, and thus a society in which marriage is simply um, uh, a passing choice uh, that can be discarded, redefined, divorce, uh, remarriage, 
a series of remarriages becomes, uh, becomes the norm, becomes accepted as the norm. In fact, uh, you know, we see regularly articles of people who've been married for a long time as a kind of exceptional, a remarkable story that needs to be tell. I was just reading, I think of um, Rob Lowe, the actor Rob Lowe's 30 year marriage, uh, which is seen as extraordinary, something so unusual that it needs a special story told about it rather than being a kind of norm that we, uh, that we take to be defining of who we are. And I think we see this redefinition of who we are uh, now seeping down into the deepest core of human identity, our sexuality, our sexual orientation, which now is necessarily seen as something that's in flux, can be redefined, or even our sexuality, our gender, whether one is a man or a woman, a male or a female. Uh, the Bible begins with the statement that uh, uh, man, and, man and woman, God created them. Uh, but that now is subject to our own revision and our own redefinition. I think then what we see is that what was at least uh, proposed as a somewhat modest understanding of politics that would conclude and lead to a limited form of government becomes a, uh, and, and contains an internal logic that necessarily reshapes the entire order of humanity. It remakes us in its own image. And where nature in particular becomes an obstacle to this redefinition, and we can think especially in the realms of family, in the realms of sexuality, the realms of reproduction, and of course in our um, the fact of our createdness and thus our, um, our yearning uh, to know and ultimately to pay respect uh, and worship to God. But in these areas of life today, we see the liberal order becoming not just um, a kind of neutral sphere as it claims, but increasingly aggressive in enforcing its orthodoxy that the default in all of these spheres of life must be to liberate us from any understanding of ourselves as having been created in any way with a kind of given identity, with a kind of defining sense of self, which arises from an inheritance, which arises from our very nature, which arises from our creatureliness as members of families and as creators of families, and of course arises as our creatureliness as created, as creatures who have been created by a power greater and uh, more commanding and, and, and more perfect than ourselves. We take on the features or we seek to take on the features of the divine in remaking ourselves, in creating ourselves, in creating ourselves in the image of what the liberal order understands to be the true self uh, that we ought to aspire to become. And in this uh, now new authoritarian, I think, um, uh, visibly authoritarian order that I think Poland has certainly experienced as a member of the European Union, uh, that those of us of more traditional religious faith increasingly experience in a very visible way uh, in, in the Western world, in the United States increasingly. Uh, we see that at the very outset that liberalism was premised upon a kind of falsehood, a deep lie, a fundamentally disfigured and disfiguring understanding of the human creature and of human beings and human nature. And thus, I think we find ourselves at an impasse where we must both reach back into the past to discover there the wisdom and knowledge of who we are and what we ought to be in such thinkers uh, that I think predate the liberal tradition, uh, that reaching all the way back to antiquity in, in thinkers such as Aristotle and Plato in Cicero, and of course in that pre-liberal tradition of Christianity and especially the treasures of the Roman Catholic intellectual, philosophical, and theological tradition. But we must also reach forward and understand that having now gone through this time of liberalism, that it's not merely to seek to restore something uh, that is no longer in existence, but to create something new, uh, to take what might be some things we've learned uh, as a consequence of liberalism, uh, to, to uh, adopt and adapt aspects that might be worthy uh, of, uh, of in, some, in some way, shape or form of retaining while placing it within a frame 
that doesn't premise the human nature of freedom and the human uh, and the human person as this unencumbered sovereign choosing self. So I hope uh, I hope that at least gives some flavor uh, for the nature of the book that now is available uh, in the Polish language. And I do look forward to the occasion uh, when I might be able to join you uh, in, uh, in having more of these conversations uh, with my regrets of not being there uh, uh, on this, uh, in, this, in this particular instance, looking forward to uh, future opportunities to have these discussions with you. Thanks very much. And, uh, and I hope that you can um, have, have a conversation about some of these issues um, once, I, uh, once I sign off, which I will do now. Thank you again. Take care. Bye-bye.